I've been told by some people that I should probably just forget about it. Forget about raising awareness. Forget about this illness. But I can't because it's a part of me. And I watch people suffer every day. You know, I was a go get them kind of girl. And I don't even know what it's like to be normal. Growing up, I was, you know, a normal child and had great teenage years. I graduated from high school. I graduated from college in 2007. I had an associate's degree in law enforcement and criminal justice. My intentions were to become a Rhode Island State Trooper. That actually got cut short because in 2007, I had started experiencing headaches and at first I thought it was really nothing. It just, you know, it was head pain and I would take some over-the-counter meds and go about my day and I would continue working and also um, taking care of my son. I had just got out of a really abusive relationship so I was thinking maybe it was just the stress from that. I did go back to school for a few more years and I got um, my associates in paralegal work as well. And continuing to work, still getting these headaches, not really understanding what was going on. And then it just started to become my way of life. Like I just thought that's how everybody lived. And then finally one day it just got really, really, really bad and I decided that I needed to see my primary care physician because it wasn't something that was, I wasn't able to control it anymore. These over-the-counter medications, they just weren't working. He had suggested that I see a neurologist because they sounded like migraines. That was something new for me because I had never heard of migraines. I just thought it was a headache. So I went to my neurologist and they had started me on medications. And so I just continued on that path for quite a few years. I tried going to a chiropractor that didn't work out very well. And if, I, if it did, it was only temporary. And acupuncture, and it was like a roller coaster. It was, it was nonstop trying to find answers and I really couldn't find any. Mm. I even got into certain procedures that were experimental. And ultimately, I ended up in the hospital twice. You know, I had my friends, I had my fiance at the time, and they were very supportive. At the time, I was working at a financial advisement company. They were very supportive, probably some of my biggest cheerleaders. It came to the point where it was better if I didn't return to work because I wasn't okay. I received an email from my fiance basically stating he had been to my house, he packed up everything that he had, and he left. He loved me, but not the way that he thought, and he did not sign up for me being sick. And shortly thereafter, I also lost a group of friends that I had known for years. Well, I'm talking more than half of my life. They said I had changed. They said I don't show up to any events that they invite me to. Which, when you have migraines, you're not always up to going to events. I've lost my career. I lost my friends. I lost somebody who I thought I was going to spend the rest of my life with. It takes a toll. Right. And I don't think that people really understand that. Ultimately, I am no longer working and I take it day to day. My son and my mom are my biggest, biggest cheerleaders. So I was on Facebook one day and I just happened to see a picture of a girl and it basically said, rest in peace, you know, and it happened to be a photo of Melissa. That actually brought me into finding migraine awareness groups on Facebook. And there's plenty of them. We share the good, bad, ugly. When family doesn't understand, there's somebody there. And although it's virtual, and people tend to believe that Facebook is not real, it does create real relationships. Mm -hmm. And I know that 
I probably wouldn't be here if I hadn't found that group because I was giving up. Everybody had abandoned me. Sorry. It's okay. Take a seat. I find comfort in knowing that I don't feel this pain mm. all alone. Like somebody else can understand what I'm going through. They can feel it. Maybe not exactly, but they can relate to it. Mm. I tell them all the time, we need to lean on each other because for shoulder to shoulder mm. and we can move back and forth, then we won't fall down. And I think it, with each suicide that we hear about in our community, our migraine community, I think it scares us a little more because it becomes real to know that we aren't protected. Like it could be any one of us at one point. One person you have a conversation with one day, could be gone the next. I watch a mom mourn the loss of her daughter almost every day. If migraines didn't exist, her little girl would still be here.